The sight, the sounds, the school spirit, the football. Get ready for Friday Frenzy with the WATE 6 on your side sports team. Welcome to Friday Frenzy. I'm Tim Owens alongside Reese Van Hafton. Reese, we've got a great lineup of games tonight. Before we get to them, did you get rained on tonight? I did not. Must be nice. That's right. We got 13 games, Tim, including our game of the week between Powell and Anderson County. Let's get right to it. Let's get right to it, Tim. Last year's meeting ended up with a combined 100 points. First quarter, Walker Martinez hands it off to Navy commit Gavin No, who That's takes guy it right there. to the outside around the defender. He's dapped me up one time. Finished with a hurdle over the teammate for six. Make it 7 nothing, Mavs. Ela Loving. Loved doing the early action in this one. Mavs with a foot on the gas. Here comes No again. Sidestepping his way into the end zone for another touchdown. 13 to Zelch. Second quarter now. Martinez with a dot to Aiden Green. He has other plans with the interception. He mossed them high point. The receiver for the interception. His pick six turns into six for the Panthers. Dylan Stokesbury connects with Connor Wheeler, who takes it into pay dirt. Powell cuts the deficit to 13 7. But no is a powerhouse tonight. Breaks through the middle oh, for his goodbye. third touchdown. Waving him goodbye bye. That's the final score right there. 48 to 14. Kellyanne Stitz is live at the game. Kellyanne, what was it like out there? Hey guys, it was really exciting. Now, Powell head football coach, uh, and so exciting that the lights just went out, but Powell head football coach D, uh, Matt Lowe said coming into this one that whoever controlled the line of scrimmage was going to be the winner. And tonight, it was the Anderson County Mavericks. Now, AC head football coach Davey Gillum said for the past three meetings with the Panthers, they had them down, but they could never finish. And tonight, the team played its most complete game against the defending state champions. They finished all four quarters. Even when they had the lead, they never felt comfortable. And Davey Gillum is so proud of his guys' effort tonight. From the get-go, this game had a different feeling. Um, physically, we dominated the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And um, I hope Potts is okay. He's an unbelievable football player. Um, but even early when he was still in, our, our, our D-line was really giving them fits. And our secondary was doing a good job staying on the reeds, keeping people covered. We did a good job of not diving after Potts and chasing him and getting, getting hits on him. And, um, you know, that was a big difference. Gillum strategized to keep the Panthers on defense. Running the clock and controlling the tempo was apparent from the first drive that lasted about seven minutes. However, when quarterback Walker Martinez had a chance to light it up, he took it, connecting with his top target wide receiver Bryson Bowell for two touchdowns. Of no running back Gavin No, who scored those three touchdowns in the first half, he didn't return to the game with an injury, but David Gillum said he is expecting to have him return next week. Guys. Kellyanne, lights out coverage out there. Glad they got the lights back on for you. The Gibbs Eagles start their long season of no home games. Gibbs Stadium has not been completed. The Eagles face halls in the season opener. The Red Devils starting a new era with Brent Hughes as the head coach. First drive for Gibbs ends in disaster. Bryson Palmer fumbles the ball on the goal line. And Cole Burnett recovers the rock for Halls. Halls would have to punt it. The next drive, Nathan Butler bowls his way over the top for the first score of the game. Gibbs leads 7 0. Next drive. Though for Halls, Casson Huffaker completes a dart to Camden Johnson on the sideline. Halls would again have to punt, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nathan Butler fights his way into the end zone for his second score of the game. Gibbs goes on to win 37 16. The final. Carnes return star running back Deshaun Bishop for his senior season. Pick it up in the third quarter. They're taking on Harden Valley. Beavers leading 21-10. Bishop takes the handoff, gets the edge for the first down and more. And then later, they're going to go to that play action fake. They're going to fake the handoff to Bishop, and Hayden Tarwater finds Desmond Lockett in the end zone. That made it 28-10. Bishop picking up right where he left off last season. After the band gets done playing at halftime there, he's breaking off the 65-yard run for a tutty. Carnes wins easily, 35-17 the final. That dude is fast, Tim. Many schools in Knox County went through coaching changes this offseason. Both Oak Ridge and South Doyle are entering new eras. Clark Duncan hung up his whistle at South Doyle. Paul Shelton took over. For the Wildcats, Joe Gaddis retired. Scott Cummings slid into that coaching job. South Joel trying to get fancy on special teams. The fake punt fumbled. Wildcats recover in prime territory. 
On the ensuing drive, Peyton Sharp with a dart to Elijah Rogers, who's going to tiptoe his way through the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Make it 8 0 Wildcats. Both teams won it, waited through a lightning delay, but Oak Ridge goes on to win 46 7. Another team going through a coaching change is Fulton. The Falcons hand the keys to Jeff McMillan. The rain did not stop Marcellus Jackson from dancing. This He's, kid's yeah, got oh a little goodness. wheels too. There, the quarterback Reese. shimmies his way into Pater for a 20 2 lead. It was really coming down, Tim. And when you score, you show some of your fans some love. Dab them up, dab them up. On the ensuing kickoff, Demarcus Allen turns on the turbos for Austin East, and he weaves his way through some traffic, and he eventually takes it all the way to the Heezy, saying, I can do it too. The Roadrunners trimmed it all the way down to five points, but the man the Falcons call Mar Mar would not be denied. Marcellus Jackson showing off how slippery he is. Get off me. You can't bring this man down. The Falcons start the season off with a 41 to 22 win, Tim. That kid is fast. He's so good, He's man. Doing, doing it in the rain, too. Well, Friday Frenzy just heating up. Coming up after the break, we've got another premier matchup between Carter and Webb. Stay with us. Welcome back yeah. to... How old were you when that came Eighth out? Eighth grade, man. I, I don't, I, you probably weren't born yet. I, I don't know when it was, but not <laughs> old at all. Though. Let's put it that way. Some big things are happening for the Webb Spartans this season. Head coach David Meske is hanging up after 40 years. Yeah, he's got an explosive offense in his final year, and it starts with that young man right there. Charlie Robinson committed to Navy earlier this week and told me before the season he's got a state championship in his crosshairs. Chandler Wilson, look at us spoil the party tonight as Carter visits Mesky Stadium. Green Hornets with the ball first. Wilson rolls to his right, buying time to find a Brody Blankenship in the end zone. That made it 7 0 Carter. The Spartans, though, they had an answer. A four play drive going 75 yards, capped by the Robinson touchdown pass on the slant. Oh, that is so sweet. That tied the game up at seven. Second quarter now, Robinson going to the air again, and he's finding the end zone again. Webb. Takes care of Carter tonight, 46-21, the final. Last year, Catholic blew out Chucky Doak, 63-7. The Irish are trying to replicate that. Catholic up 14-0, but the Black Knights were driving. That got stopped cold. Broderick Gibson, a nice INT on the deep ball. He returns the ball all the way back near midfield. That put Catholic in business. Very nice play. Reese, what do they call it when a guy high points ball over a defender like Randy Moss? I'm about to do it to you right now. That's Moss. <laughs> they get Moss. <laughs> Jared Sensiball, what a catch there. And that set up this. Quincy Pinnell prances into the end zone. Irish led 21 14 at the break. They go on to win 41 14 the final. Both CAK and Kings Academy are trying to improve off a second round exit last year. Tim's still recovering from me mossing him. In the second quarter, CAK <laughs> leading 10 0. And their defense is playing really well. Eli Etherton with the sack of Kings Academy quarterback Avery Jordan. These teams would go into halftime with CAK leading 10 to nothing. The Warriors would go on to win in a low scoring game, 16 to nothing. Eddie Courtney is looking to get Farragut off to a quick start against a tough beach opponent. Pick it up in the second quarter, game tied at 14. Admirals driving with a handoff to Owen Schuster for a modest gain before he swarmed by a couple of beach defenders. So after trying to move the ball on the ground, Luke Johnson airs one out to the end zone, but again, it's the beach D this time. J.P. Courtney with an interception. Farragut gets the ball back with just a few seconds left in the half, and they are forced to settle for a field goal attempt. And it's up, and it's good to make it 17-14. That gets the Farragut faithful fired up. Fired up. Beach all defense. That. All that paint. Getting some work done on D in this one with Darius Johnson. Picking up a sack, but the Admirals offense figures it out and hangs on to win 31 to 28. Big win for Eddie Courtney and That guys. is true. Last season, the Seymour Eagles made the playoffs for the first time since 2015 after a delay of almost two hours for Lightning. Tim saw none of it. Gallenberg Pittman starts fast. Brady Hammonds with a pass to Whit Whaley, who makes some nice moves and runs all the way for the touchdown. Highlanders lead early 7-0. Seymour on offense now. Quarterback Blake Johnson. Well, he's picked off by Tegan Avers of GP. Easy interception there. He sets up the Highlanders in great field position. They had a field goal off of that a few plays later to go up 10-0 in the first quarter as GP routes Seymour 45-14. Stick around. We'll be right back after this break. 
Central looking to avenge last year's 42-17 loss to Greenville, but it was more of the same tonight. Damian Short in from two yards out. Tough night for Central. 49-7 the final. Alcoa starts its pursuit for its eighth straight title tonight. Tornado strike first opening kickoff. Brennan Duggan getting it dug in. Tim wrote that. First play of the season, first points of the season. Duggan takes the kickoff back for a touchdown. That would make it seven zip tornadoes. They also return a punt for a touchdown tonight as well. Later, Zach Lunsford finding Eli Owens what for another name. score. More of the same for Alcoa tonight. 38 21, the final. Great night for the Owens is right there. <laughs> Campbell County wants to return to the playoffs for the second straight season. Chattanooga Central up 20 to nothing. Here come the Cougars. Landon Hensley hits Mason Shanks on a slant for the Campbell County touchdown to make it 20 to 7. But the Cougars, they came up short 35 21. The final in that one. Yeah, Tim, thanks for joining us for another edition of Friday Frenzy. We hope to see you next week. Until then, we'll leave you with more scores from across East Tennessee. Also, coaches, don't forget to submit Player of the Week nominations. Have a great weekend, everyone.